How's it going guys? This is Ryo Murata, photographer based in Tokyo. So in this video, I'd like to talk about why I sort of like switched from the Siconic Flashmate L308S to the Siconic Flashmate L308X. So, <laughs> and gave you guys my overall reasons why I made that switch. And also, I would like to say that it's exactly the same light meter, but that's not the case for today. So it's going to be a long one, hopefully unfortunately so so if you guys are shooting with a film camera you guys probably know i shoot with a gw690 that is my main medium for my camera my substitute or not substitute my alternative is nikon f3 and sometimes i shoot with the mamiya s1645 1000s but you guys probably know that the gw690 camera does not have a light meter and there are also instances where like the Nikon F3 that I have, there is a light meter, but it's broken. And typically in those two scenarios, majority of cases, you guys probably have a light meter. I typically shoot with my film camera and accompanied with the Siconic L308S for the past four or five years or so. And fortunately enough, I had no issues with this light meter except there was this exception where I was actually starting to shoot in nighttime photography where if you guys know the L308S does not have the glow in the dark LCD screen. And that's basically the main difference between the 308S and the 308X, whether or not the LCD glows in the dark. And typically speaking, probably like 80, 90% of you guys will be happy with the 308S. However, that glow in a dark screen becomes really helpful if you're either shooting outside during long exposures or if you're shooting in a studio in a dark environment, which I'm a product photographer, so typically studios are you know, afraid of the dark and stuff like that. It's like really dark, pitch black actually, to cut the ambient light away from the main light source. So went a little bit off topic, but like I said, I made that switch from the L308S to the L308X. And interestingly enough, the size and weight and the design itself hasn't changed. The major difference is basically, you guys probably seen it, is the color. Uh, the 308S is sort of like black and gray, while the 308X on the sideline, there's sort of like a, this blue type of paint on the right side. So it's like basically easy to like identify if it's a 308X or not. But, and also for educational purposes, for people who are new to sort of like light meters and stuff like that, when you're sort of like metering for the light, you have like two ways of doing it. There's spot metering and there's also incident metering. Spot metering is basically used when you're in a location where you're shooting like near infinity so you're like shooting a landscape and that sort of like subjects such as mountains rivers and stuff like that is so far away that it's, it's impossible to see what the ex exact exposure is you basically use spot metering just slide the light bulb to the right and it shows the sensor protru not protruding out but there's a sensor sonics like made sensor and you basically sort of face that what uh, what you're shooting and basically read for the you know the settings and typically when you use these types of like light meters you basically punch in the shutter speed and iso and this will vary depending on what kind of film stocks you use and it basically tells you the correct aperture so maybe 5.6 f8 or f9 or f11 and you basically dial those into your film camera and voila you get a perfectly exposed photo and the other one is incident type of metering where you basically slide back the you know the white ball type of meter to the left and what that is is basically when you're in a situation where you can basically walk towards to your subject to do the actual metering. So typically that's basically used when you're shooting models, fashion models, product photography and stuff like that. And that way is actually much more efficient because you can basically, you're, because you're like closer to the subject, you get more of a sort of like a, how should I say, direct sort of like higherly, not higherly, a more accurate reading if you're using incident. So I went off a little bit off topic. A couple of years, like four or five years, I've been using the 308S. And 
fortunately enough, it never broke down on me. And I had great, like, sort of like, sort of like experience with this light mirror because it's small, compact, lightweight. It's made out of plastic, unfortunately, but it gets the job done. It reads correctly and it's much more efficient compared to using a smartphone. And this is due to the fact that Psychonix is the only one of the only companies that go into the field of like, sort of like, giving you giving photographers videographers cinematographers accurate results on how much light is basically hitting our you know subjects and stuff like that and in my case there has been this instance where i've started to like shoot in darker environments like long exposures and i want to shoot in studios and i realized that this 308s does not glow in the dark the lcd screen is just the lcd screen and you have, and I have basically so much issues like reading in the dark. And so that was actually one of my main reasons why I switched to the 308X. And these products, like, I don't know until I like purchase it and use it for myself, but I initially thought that the X has some kind of button where you, when you press it, it basically glows in the dark, but it wasn't like that. It's basically an automatic LCD screen that glows in the dark when that light meter is in a situation where it's like minus negative 5 EV. So when you go into a dark room, it basically automatically sort of like glows in the dark. And when you go into brighter environments, it basically doesn't show up at all. So that might be a downer for some, but for me, I guess I can take it because it's when I'm shooting, I'm shooting in a super dark environment or super bright environment. So there's no hassle in pressing a button for it to like illuminate. And other than that, there isn't that much of a great difference. Another like new feature that they sort of like, sort of like introduced in the X is it has aperture priority. So, so typically in the 308S, you basically punch in the, uh, the shutter speed and the ISO, and it basically tells you the aperture, whether or not if it's too bright or too dark, and you basically adjust accordingly. This time around, the X has aperture priority mode, which the predecessor didn't have. So depending on how you shoot, I don't, I never shoot with aperture priority because typically it gives these random shutter speed, which I have sort of like this irritation going on when I don't want to change the shutter speed that frequently, but there are those people who want to shoot in a specific aperture. So it, the, basically the light meter, the 308X can tell you what the ideal shutter speed is. So that's another feature that they sort of like introduced. And along with that, unfortunately it's not for photography, but if you're into cinema, it has sort of like an extra feature that X has a sort of like a camera mode, which it has two sort of like cinema features, if I'm right. Like if you punch in the frame rate and the shutter speed, it tells you the optimal lux brightness to get for the perfect exposure. Uh, I never use it unfortunately, so I can't say much. And I would like to end this video, but there's going to be people who's going to be asking me this question. Is the Siconic Flashmate L308X worth it or not? And I would say yes and no. If it's your first, light meter that you're going to purchase for your film camera, I would say with confidence it would be a no due to the fact that it is rather pricey. In Japan it costs roughly 27,000 yen which is roughly $220. While the previous S version, the 308S, is discontinued unfortunately, but you can purchase that used for roughly $150. And for me, I do photography as a living. I can afford it, so I went with the 308X. But keep in mind that I pr I had 308S, and typically the same for cameras. You can basically sell your older cameras, older light meters for the newer one, and the price difference that I paid was roughly seventy dollars, which is all right actually. And for people like I said who are starting out, that two hundred dollar price range might be out of your budget range and I would highly suggest getting the 308S and starting out from there. And then if you're like, if you're, if you really like film photography, if you're starting to like shoot in darker environments, doing long exposures or shooting in a studio that's pitch black to cut down the ambient light and stuff like that, then I would highly recommend just selling the 308S for the 308X. That is the best option advice I could give to people. 
but if you're like starting out 308s is the best start way to like start probably you can snag one for 100 or 130 dollars if i'm right and on ebay or some kind of like craigslist type of sites and another area that i need to like mention is that unlike cameras digital cameras specifically which on the day you purchase a new camera same as cars it depreciates the value goes down the drain so i highly suggest not purchasing a new digital camera because the value of that camera goes downhill significantly the moment you purchase a new camera used camera the value just goes down however Siconix sort of like light meter on the other hand the value doesn't go down the drain at all and because this is due to the fact that one of the main reasons is that Siconix light meters if you look through the history of Siconix light meters they make a lot of variations however they never unlike a digital cameras they don't do frequent updates or like major upgrades the 308s and the 308x if i'm right i think there's this about five to ten year span when they sort of like shifted from the s to the x and even now today's a lot of professional people use the s and the x and they don't have that much of a difference in terms of like functionality just the lcd screen that basically glows in the dark and what i'm trying to say is that even if you purchase the newer x version the value of it won't go down significantly compared to a digital camera that you bought new and for an investment per type of purposes i think it is worth it especially any kind of light meters that are made by Siconic, similar to like i don't know c stands if you're in <laughs> like commercial photography those made by avengers and matthews don't depreciate in the long term long horizon so for me this is a really great investment for which would probably sustain your photography career similar to like a like a usable like tripod typically lasts more than 10 years this will last more than 10 years but i kind of wish i mean if Siconics are like watching this video my advice to them is that I wish they make, uh, this is, you guys probably know that Siconic light meters right now, as of 2023, most of them are made out of plastic, hard plastic, durable plastic. However, I wish they make a little bit uh, of a, like a higher durability type of light meters that's sort of like splash proof, waterproof for those people who are going to sort of like wildlife, who are doing wildlife photography, landscape photography, because if I'm right, this is not waterproof. And there's a battery compartment which uses, you know, double A batteries. I mean, I had no issues with the batteries and stuff like that because I never go into rainy situations. But if they had the time and energy and effort to do the research and development, I kind of wish they make a similar product, but a sort of like a splash proof, waterproof, dust proof type of light meter. And then I would probably buy that instead of this because I, people like highly durable stuff you know even now today's like old Nikon cameras were durable dust proof and stuff like that so I kind of wish they make us or like a durable version of this and I went off topic unfortunately but I'm like praise, praying that Siconic headquarters are watching my video so yeah I went off topic unfortunately so yeah that's basically it on uh, light meters my reasons why I switched to the 308X and I'm gonna cherish this as my precious equipment <laughs> for my future career to come so and yeah although I paid for this with my hard-earned cash I think it's worth it for anyone who is going into photography as a career or if you're like starting out it is a great investment so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I'm happy to reply. We will see you next time. Peace out.